Today we have gathered here to do Guru Puja. This system started long time back in India, I think even at the time of Patanjali, maybe even earlier, when there were great seekers and their gurus were sitting in the jungles where they used to get uh, permission to go there and then they would get their realization, very few of them, one or two. So we had many rishis and munis in the olden times in India. So this system of guru started. Also one of the reason is that, that there is no organized religion in India. There is no popes, there are no priests, nothing like that. They have priests just uh, for worshipping in the temples. But for giving realization, for talking about higher life, they all had to go to very great realized souls. <coughs> and it was absolutely f the freedom of the guru whom to accept, whom not to accept. And everybody was tested thoroughly by the guru if they are capable of achieving Self-realization or And this test was so hard, so difficult and also to a point of cruelty that very few could pass through that test. It's not like Sahaja Yoga, everybody is a Sahaja Yoga, it's not like that. That of course made it a very narrow margin for people to achieve their realization. And these guru never used to leave their own seats, they called it takya. They would be there in their own place. All those who would like to go to him could come. If he allowed, then only they can meet. You may go for miles together, nothing no obligations of the guru that he should meet you. <coughs> Perhaps they didn't feel that love and compassion for the seekers. They didn't understand that these seekers are ardently seeking the truth and they should not suffer. That may be the reason they were <coughs> not so much concerned. All the time they were testing their desire. Even Ramadas, who was the guru of Shivaji, was testing even Shivaji for so many times, though he was a born realized. <coughs> so to get this Guru Pada, to position of a guru, after that they had to work very, very hard to achieve a state of a saint. But in Sahaja Yoga that is not the case, as you know. I just thought if people get their realization, they'll see for themselves what's wrong with them. They will introspect themselves and will try to correct themselves. It is true for many, many people, but some of them still are lingering behind and are going on and on and on, thinking that they are Sahaja Yogis, they have achieved a lot, they are something very special. So this delusion is all the time, is creating this problem. This delusion makes them very <coughs> narrow-minded, selfish, self-centered and people can't believe how can they be Sahaja Yogis. <coughs> so the first and foremost thing we have to know that this Sahaja Yoga has worked out because Param Chaitanya 
is transmitting compassion. It never did before. It never had that kind of an attitude, which it is there because I am a mother. And this compassion has worked it this way that you all have got your realization, you have achieved a state which we can call as a self-realized souls. <coughs> but still, because you got it so easily, cheaply, I think still we don't realize what we have got. Still we do not <coughs> practice meditation, introspection and dedication. Some are very much there, but mostly we are just living in the idea that we have already achieved. <coughs> so the first thing we should introspect, are we concerned about ourselves? All the time do we think that we are suffering, we have this problem, that problem, or this should be done, that should be done. If the attention is on that, that all the time you are worried about yourself, then you cannot break. You cannot break through the shell of your being which is under the domination of your mental selfishness or self-centeredness. Even self-centeredness is absolutely against your growth. There are many people who come, I have seen even to Kabela, I know they have to suffer a lot because they think it's a <laughs> very open space where they have to live and they must make all arrangements to make themselves comfortable. Such people have to grow still much more. For a saint, any place has to be heaven. You must have seen me enjoying everything. I can live anywhere, I can sleep anywhere. I have no demands of any kind. But if you are worried about your body, comforts, our, your body troubles, then still you are at a body level, which you have to transcend. Worried about how you look, how you dress up, what sort of things you have to wear. All this makes you yet not a good surgeon. This is one style of surgeons who still want very great comforts. So what you have to do? If you are used to comforts, try to go and sleep on the street. I will not do that, but you can do it. Or sleep on a tree. You may fall down, doesn't matter. <laughs> do all kinds of things that are necessary to punish your body to understand that you are not bound with this comfort of the body. <clears throat> this is one of the greatest things one has to see, that you are not bound by your body. It's all right if you have comfort, well and good, if you don't have, well and good. For a Sahaja Yogi it is very important that he should be able to live like a saint, not necessarily that you should become a sannyasi, but from inside your body should be such that you can dominate your body. How can you not sleep anywhere? Why can you not sleep anywhere? Then also that they want to have a very um, comfortable arrangements about bathrooms, this, that. All these ideas are there because you are very self-conscious, but not super-consciousness, is not there. 
You want to have everything first class and anybody who tries to interfere with that kind of a thing, you don't like it. <coughs> I can understand a person who is very old, he cannot manage things, he has to have a certain amount of body comfort. But even young people these days are extremely comfort-oriented. That is not for certain. Of course, I have seen people in the West are better off in this matter. Because when they go to India, they told me they like ST buses better than, better than comfortable buses. So I said, why? Because, Mother, you can jump in the bus nicely with all the luggage. <laughs> because the windows are open, you can breathe. Very natural, very good. They wanted to go on bullock carts also. I mean, they enjoy all that. Actually, if you see in notice, in the Western world mostly, <coughs> people are taking to more rustic life. They are enjoying more the rustic style of life than to this so-called comfortable artificial life. Not so much Indians, I would say, also Malaysians. I, I think most of the people I've met uh, in the Western countries are really great because they can sleep anywhere, they can eat anything. You ask them, how did you like the food? What did we eat? I don't know, Mother. That is the sign. That is the sign of a person who is not bothered as to what he is eating, what he is getting, what is his taste. I like this, I like that. These words drop out. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. You might think that I'm asking you to do something hazardous thing, you see. It's not difficult at all. Because if you have to impress the people around you, you have to be like a saint. And if you are a fussy person, if you are a fuss pot, then you cannot impress others that you have got Self-realization. Many people tell me, Mother, people had to do so much to go to Himalayas, do this, do that, and then they got their Realization. How is it these people you have blessed? Even some great saints asked me that. What right they had to get this Realization? Why did you give them Realization? What have they achieved? I said only their desire. Their desire was very much there that they should get their realization and that's how they got it. But now to go into only desire is not sufficient. You have to depend on yourself. On the light of your spirit you should see what's wrong with you. This is a very important thing. Ask questions to yourself, why do I want this? Why do I need this? What is the purpose? Because as you have seen, all the rest of the world is mad, call it mad, because they are running after stupid things. They are wanting things which have no meaning to spirituality. So spirituality itself, should be self-satisfied. If you are spiritually endowed, then you are self-satisfied. And this self-satisfaction within you <coughs> will lead you to that ocean of joy about which I have been telling you and all the scriptures have described. For Sahaja is <coughs> the word we use is Nirananda. Nira Nanda means a joyous state where nothing is needed. Joy itself is joy. You are enjoying only joy. <coughs> nothing is needed to make you happy. You are happy because of joy that you have in the Nira Nanda state. If you go and see how these saints lived, you will be amazed. How they manage their life, you will be very much amazed. 
how many days they used to fast without food, never bothered, they never thought it was fasting. They just used to think we have no food, so no, don't eat. Of course you don't have to go through, you have got your realization. So now you have a power to achieve this mastery. Now you have this power. The another thing I've noticed about Sajogis, some of them have grudges about others. Sajoga is the blessings of love, blessings of compassion. There is no place for any kind of hatred or any kind of revenge or anger among Sajogis. If you have that, you must conquer it. It's a good chance if you find somebody who is very hot-tempered, who is very angry type, go and make friends with that person. Just see if you can carry on with that person or not. If there is a first spot, also make friends with such a first spot and see that you achieve that peace which will keep you above all kinds of hatred, all kinds of temper, which is a very bad thing. But some Sahaja Yogis lose their temper very fast. I would say they cannot be Sahaja Yogis because if you have no control over your anger, then how are you powerful of uh, compassion and love? But you don't even have to control it, just there. Once you have it for that state, then you just watch and see. In the olden days, the saints <coughs> mostly used to be very much angry type people. They couldn't bear the stupidity of the world and they used to be very, very angry type and <laughs> they used to run away from it. I know of a saint, Nityanand Swami, who always lived on the tree and anybody tried to come near him, he used to throw stones at him. Couldn't bear people who were all heated up and coming to him. But you don't need that. You have a way of achieving love and affection of the people who seem to be very, very troublesome and grudging type or maybe some people who are very aggressive. This is not a difficult task if you try a little bit the other way down. Mostly people when they find somebody who is a very hot-tempered person, they run away from that one. We don't want to have anything to do. Those who are not hot-tempered, those who are good-natured, you can always be friendly, what is so great about it? What is so nice about it? What is so sweet about it? But how you speak to the person, how you talk to that person, how uh, you manage that person, your love will definitely melt him down. Because he is a Sajogi, I am not saying for non Sajogis. Sajogis as they are, you have to be extremely aff compassionate and affectionate and love. The another thing which is extremely important for us to know that we have got this realization through Mother's love. Only my compassion has acted. Only the power of mother's compassion could have worked it out. Now, even if this love is flowing towards the stones or towards the mountains or towards anything which is very solid, the ripples come back. They have to come back. 
In the same way, you people now who have got Realization, have to know that compassion and love is the only power you have got, nothing else. If you love yourself, you care for yourself, you care for your family and care for your children, then you haven't achieved much. You are only worried about yourself because that's your limited area where you move. But if you can break that and find out places where you have to express your love, you can. As they say, the water finds its own level. In the same way, this compassion has to flow to all the places, to all the ditches everywhere and should find its own level. But if you are just satisfied with yourself and you are not bothered, you are just trying to believe that you are a great soul because you are a Sajogi, then I must say that you are sadly mistaken. In this lifetime, you can achieve that state. In this lifetime, you can get to that state within yourself. Now the third thing that troubles Sahaja Yogis is that, Mother, we want God's realization. That makes me laugh. You see, it is already there, already there. <coughs> like once you get into the sea and you say, Mother, we want to go to the bottom of the sea, you can always go, just slip and you will be there. In the same way, once you have developed a kind of a Self-realization and have jumped into the ocean of this compassion, <coughs> there's no need to achieve anything. The sense of achievement, I should be that, I should be this, is all coming from your human haunting. That should be over. Now you are godly people. So you should not think, I should achieve this state, I should achieve that state. But just go on slipping, just giving up all the weights that you have in your heads and it will work out. This is what I have been saying to you that <coughs> <coughs> you have to dissolve itself into the compassion. Also there are still some very people who want to be in the front. Especially Indians will all sit together in front, I've seen it that way. They have no right. They have no right to sit in front. Nobody has right to sit in front or to seek a place. <coughs> they should sit wherever they get seat to sit down with complete satisfaction. Whether you sit in front or at that corner, even in the darkness, you can get My vibrations. You can get everything. So, <coughs> to be prominent, to sit someplace where you are prominent is not necessary. What is it in a prominence? What do you get? To be lost <coughs> into the crowds, to be lost into the ocean of love is the main thing. All these are mythical, that we should somehow or other get the front, front place. You see, as Marathi Tapan Manto, Samurchi Daga Patkauli Me. Means I have managed to get the front seat. Front will be the back, and back will be the front. <coughs> it is very surprising how still people are trying to achieve something so n nonsensical. So where is your mind? Where is your attention? What are you thinking? If you are thoughtless, you will be satisfied, you will be happy. You will not ask for anything. You will not want anything. 
What is there to have? What is so important? All these ideas come from ignorance. I must tell you from ignorance. Once this Hare Rama, Hare Krishna fellow came to me <coughs> and uh, he said that, we have heard you are a great saint, this thing, that thing, and you have all the comforts of life, you have everything here, very nice, this thing, that. So, <coughs> how are you a saint? I said, how are you a saint? I have given up uh, my family, I have given up my cars, I have given up my house, I have given up my children. I said, one more thing you have given up. He said, what? Your brains. So they said, but how do you say we have given up our brains? I said, very simple. I have given up nothing because I am holding nothing. What is there to give up when you are not holding anything? Now, I would say in this house or in my, on my body, anywhere, you think you find anything equal to the dust particle of Sri Krishna, you can take it should be equal though. Now they started looking here and there. I said, then what have you given? Just stones? What have you given? Why are you boasting about giving up that and giving up this and giving up? They even shaved their head. What is it? All these useless ideas that we have done this, we have done that. Anybody in Sergio Gau thinks he's doing a lot of work for Sergio should give up completely. <coughs> That's a sign of another ignorance. If you are part and parcel of the ocean, everything is done by ocean, you are doing nothing. To have such ideas about yourself shows how little you know about yourself. You are the ocean. If you are the ocean, how can you claim I have touched this shore, I have touched that shore, I have touched this shore. No more I is left. Once this i drops out, then only the universal being within you shines. All these things are so clearly evident in our characters. Some people are very identified, say with their country or maybe with their um, worshipping style, whatever it is. All these misidentifications have to be given up. It's very difficult for people because they are so conditioned. And as long as you are conditioning, you cannot rise above your uh, mind, which is a myth, you cannot. Now, try to understand what are your conditionings are. <coughs> One of them, I would say, I've seen, I'm so surprised. You go to the Western countries, all of them only sing songs of Sri Ganesha. They know all the songs of Sri Ganesha, Sri Ganesha's photographs, Sri Ganesha's everything, children also. And now I've seen that vibration stop. Why should they stop? Why should Ganesha stop the vibration? Why they are doing it, I realized, was because I said, Sri Ganesha incarnated as Christ. Their identification is with Christ and Christianity in a very subtle way. So all the vibrations stop. Imagine with Sri Ganesha's uh, music we heard in one of the Eastern Bloc countries, and all the vibrations had stopped. And they were singing all the song, all the song of Sri Ganesha, not one song of Sahaja Leave alone about that Guru, not once. So even the, there's a very subtle, <coughs> subtle identification. There was one fellow in uh, 
Russia, supposed to be very intelligent. He said that, all right, if we keep mother's photograph and also the icons, we can uh, get the same type of vibration. You cannot. Because icons are made by some artist imaginary. These are not representing actually even Maria or Christ or anyone, they are all, all imaginary. If an uh, Italian once makes Christ, he is Italian style. <laughs> if somebody, French one makes, he is thin like French. <laughs> if uh, you get uh, somebody, <laughs> say from Holland, he will have a forehead like that. <laughs> you see, all of them, <laughs> They depict Christ as they want. Then we have Maria the same way. Her expression, her photograph, everything is all according to the imagination of the artist. <clears throat> and to whatever country you belong, that you will do. And they are not free. You can see they are not free. Because all these artists have a certain style. Now if it is Rembrandt, it's a style. If it is, say, Leonardo, it's a style. Though they are born, realize still they have a style. Nobody is like this that he'll make today like this, tomorrow like this. There's no freedom. They are bound by their own styles. Everybody has one style and that is the style they follow. Because what is the reason? Reason is, they must have done three, four type style, type styles, must have done, sure. But people must have rejected, this is no good, this is no good. So it's all, you see, opinion of the people. So they must have taken to one style, all right, this is the style. So you can see Christ, if he's Japanese, he'll have chinky eyes. If he is Chinese, he'll have no nose. <laughs> if it's Indian, he'll be dark. So all kinds of Christ I've seen. And I feel that, how can they emit vibrations, tell me? While with my photograph, how can you compare? Also cameras were to be developed at this time. Do you notice that point? Cameras were developed at this time, not before that. This loudspeaker was not developed before this. Aeroplanes were not developed before. I've been traveling for nineteen days, one day in the plane, second day in the public program. They could not do all that. Nobody could do this, neither Sri Krishna nor anyone. They could not fly by aeroplane in those days. Now we say we have sixty-five countries, somebody says there is no sixty-eight countries or go on correct. But it's only possible because today, today there are aeroplanes. They were never there. So all these things are, even video, even the way you are seeing my image there, was that available before? No. So this is a very special time where science has also supported seekers to find the truth. Science has supported. We have to be thankful to science, that part of science which has been so much supported. Even there was not a car, I could not have gone up to Milan even. Imagine going on a bullock cart, what would have happened to me? So, all these things are created today for you. You were also born in those times for the specialists. They could not give realization because that time you were not there. Very few people of your caliber were there. But I wonder if you understand your caliber, the way you are sometimes growing shows that you don't understand your caliber. You don't know what you are, 
how much the whole atmosphere has worked out for her. The science has been worked out for her. Science is a gift of the nature. All this has been worked out for you to achieve the highest state in the shortest time. But for that one has to be extremely introspective. Instead of thinking of what you have to achieve, be introspective. This introspection will help you and you will really become real gurus. When you go to other villages, other places, other cities, people should know from your being itself that some great person has come. You don't have to tell, you don't have to certify. It's a simplicity of your temperament itself. First time I went to Leningrad, nobody knew about me, no advertisements, nothing. They just put some posters, some. And there were two thousand people in the hall, two thousand outside. In the hall they had to pay, all right. I was wondering what's the matter. And when I came out, I gave them realization, but I said, you come tomorrow. So two thousand from inside and two thousand from outside and about two thousand more came and we all were sitting on the ground. I was amazed, I said, what made you come to my program? I said, Mother, so obvious, your photograph. Such sensitivity of spirituality, so obvious from your photograph. And there were scientists, there were doctors, there were all kinds of intelligent people, but they could feel the spirituality from the face. That kind of a sensitivity we should have. When you don't need any discretion, nothing, you know, this is this, this is this, this is this. Don't have to judge, don't have to think about. You cannot say who will be best footed, uh, fitted for this, those who have come for the first time, those who are come later on or those who will be coming younger or older, women, men or children. It is there. In my lifetime if I see so many of you, so much transformed, looking so beautiful, so nice, creating such a good atmosphere. It's more than satisfaction for me. And sometimes I think I, there's nothing to be done now anymore, finished. But then they invite me here and invite me there. So I'm just doing. But to be very frank, I'm over satisfied. Now once you have planted the tree, it's like a mango tree. Once you have planted the mango tree, you looked after it for three, four years, then it looks after itself. It gives fruits, it doesn't need any water, nothing, it just grows by itself. In the same way it should happen with you. You should grow by yourself. Of course you'll find people who are stupid, who are aggressive, who are not at all Sajogis and trying to be Sajogis, you'll find all kinds. So just see them, that's all. In this uh, Guru Puja, you have to decide that what are the criteria. First a guru has to be without desires any desires also. Niricca is this. There's one uh, false guru in India who said that if I had the powers as mother has, then I would have become the king of this world. So people said, then why don't you become? 
Why does mother become like that? Why does she become the king? So they said because she is niricha, means she has no desires. A person who has no desires will not become anything. So I said, go and tell him, if you have desires, you cannot have powers also. It's only because you have no desires, that's why all these powers are. So any desire that comes into your mind, you should say, ah, look at it. Just forget it. When the desire is overpowering, you just divert your attention. Any kind of stupid desire can take charge. And how do you become desireless? Is by getting to the thoughtless awareness. Any crisis comes in, you should be able to rise into that state of thoughtless awareness. Just be peaceful. Look at your desires with peace. You can tell the desire, oh, I am very much satisfied, now don't come, I don't want. That's how you can become desireless. There is this compassion and the compassion that becomes actually the power. Small, small things you can express your love. Very small, small things. In very sweet ways you can express your love. It's very important. The whole world needs today love and peace. And you have to give peace and love to everyone that is possible. Of course, Sir Yogis is very easy, but even non Sir Yogis, you must treat them with respect and love. But you should not have a desire that you should get back anything from them. It's all right, whatever done is forgotten. You have known so many Sahaja Yogis who came to Sahaja Yoga, have gained so much and have betrayed us, doesn't it? Not important. Because they are going to be losers, not we. So there's nothing to bother about these things. Then another thing is try to see that your mind doesn't react. Some people have a habit, or I think most of them have, to react. You tell them something, they'll put their own one tail with it, something. Never will they accept if somebody says something, if you are reacting, what will go into your heads, what will go into your heart, what will go into your attention. So the reaction itself, is a sign of not proper development within yourself. This attention which is trying to go into all the areas of your mind and a body and everywhere is not there. It cannot enter because as soon as it tries to enter, you shut it by reacting. You cannot see anything just for seeing sake, you must react. I say, this is not good, that's not good. Uh, if I say it's five o'clock, it's enough, it is five past two minutes, three seconds. <laughs> this comes with terrible condition, which has to go away, not to react. Why should you react? Then the argument starts, then fight starts, then wars come. If you tell your mind, nothing doing, you are a myth and I am not going to react to anything, 99.9% problems will be solved. Then the last but not the least is the ego. I can't understand a saint having an ego, just can't understand. Uh, 
it's so stupid to have ego. It's a kind of a domination. If slightest things are wrong, you get angry. If somebody says something, you get angry. That means your power of love and compassion is still not full. You can, of course, correct people when they have to be corrected, but for that you should have this power within yourself. The person should know that you are correcting that person because you love that person, not for selfishness, not for any gain. But this ego is a very big problem and that comes up by, I should say, not only ignorance but stupid ideas about yourself. If you think you are something great already, then what can you do? Ego makes you very arrogant, horrible, but if you are humble, really, not to… just to have the humility of a businessman, but if you are humble from within yourself, from your heart, enjoying your humility, then this ego can run away. You have to ask yourself now, what are you angry for? Again I come back to the same point, introspection. Because you are not here just to carry on some jobs, but you are here to become saints. Then this ego should be made into a great instrument of love and joy. You can, it's not difficult. This one is what, what is ego is reactions to things. You can react to things in a sweet way or you can react to things in a, a deadly way. Then humor comes in. Also you speak as if uh, there is fragrant flowers which are coming out. Then every action of yours, everything becomes very gentle and sweet. Have this ego that will be gentle, will be kind, will be sweet, will be forgiving, will be loving. Let's have this ego. Start with this kind of a ego the other way down. You will be surprised how you can really conquer the whole world. On this day of Guru Puja, is Guru is supposed to tell some, something to his disciples about correcting themselves. In my own sweet way I have said to you, which you shouldn't mind. I don't mean to condemn you by any chance, but to give you a proper sense of introspection. Proper sense of introspection by which you all get your Guru Pada. My only, I shouldn't say desire because I don't have desire. So my only vision is that I should see all the sages drenched in the power of love, enjoying each other's love, enjoying each other's relationship and improving relationships. I know there are problematic people, I know they are problematic. But if you cannot solve the problem, what's the use of your become masters? So I leave it to you to solve your own problems which are you are facing. And introspection with love and compassion, not by condemning yourself. I'm sure you can manage it. May God bless you.